All right, guys, welcome back out here to Ye Old Video Stone. We're going to talk about something real quick. So now we're going to do like a little appendix, appendix piece. We're going to talk about special tools. Mostly this guy. And how I determined how to make it. <clears throat> so I waited until... I got my intake camshaft out of the bike and I put it down on this fancy sheet of cardboard and I just took a sharpie, marked it up, kind of drew it out and then I took my calipers and measured what this diameter here is, what the thickness of this rib is and the distance between the outside of this rib and the inside of I'm not even gonna call it a rib pretty much the distance from here to there okay so what I come up with was this hole which goes over the camshaft is I can't tell if that's a two or a seven I think it's a two so it's 0 0.825 inches which is I think within a thousandth of an inch of 21 millimeter <clears throat> okay the distance from the outside of that diameter to the inside of uh, the hole that you got to that you have to pick up is 0 0.161 millimeter and then the hole needs to be 0 0.332 no sorry 0 0.161 inches and then the hole that you need to drill is 0 0.332 inches which is pretty much a letter Q drill bit. <clears throat> so, when I made mine, I actually put a little bit of a slot, slot to it to help me pick up the hole. You can't, you can see it's kind of this like tear, teardrop shape. At first I thought I was going to be smart and pick up both, both of the holes in the camshaft, but if you try to pick this one up back here, then the uh, the chain kind of gets in the way because it's still it's still there when you're doing this. So I wound up cutting that portion off because this is pretty much how Aprilia makes theirs. Um, you can see here I had to come in. You have to counterbore this enough <clears throat> so that this thing will sit all the way down onto the camshaft face you know you don't want it to be you know when you put it on the camshaft face you don't want it to be kicking up this way or kicking up this way when you tighten it down um, a little bit less important when you're taking the camshaft off but whenever we start to put the camshaft back on we're gonna actually have to from <clears throat> from what I'm reading you really got to put some torque on this thing to get that cam thrust back in it so this is a 20 22 millimeter bolt and the reason I went with it was uh, so the the piece of steel that I use for this is like 3 16 or quarter inch and I wanted to make sure that I got this face deep enough so that it would sit flat so I wound up going with the bolt bigger so that after I welded it on, see I think here I'm actually where I machined down into is actually into the bolt. So really all that's holding this thing together is this little bit of weld here and the bit of weld here that I haven't ground away yet. Um, <clears throat> this is this was my second attempt at it. My first attempt was not very well educated. <clears throat> so uh, 
looking back, if I had to make this again, I would have used a hex head, probably 14 millimeter, because I would have probably done the same thing with a 14, maybe used a thicker piece of this material, maybe like 3 8 or something. That way I knew I could get um, whatever the dimension is from here to whatever the dimension is from like say the top of this surface to the bottom of this uh, diameter here and that way just to make sure that you're sitting flat on the end cake on the intake cam um, that way you're not whenever you tighten it up it's not trying to tweak it because if you started trying to tweak it then that might introduce some binding when you're trying to actually tension it on reassembly so <clears throat> um, the only other special tools that I needed were the pins and in one a couple of videos ago I kind of went over how you could do that with drill bits uh, I'm fixing to show you like if you wanted to purchase 4.88 millimeter dowel pins like where can you go to get them there is a place if you live in the US you might have to wait a couple days if you want to but uh, they will probably be cheaper than the Aprilia tools so Hopefully I went over this well enough to give you an idea of how I made mine. Um, these dimensions here, you know, if you're smart enough, if you know how to make stuff, you should be able to figure out how to make this just from these dimensions. Uh, so, what else was I going to go over? Yeah. If I did this again, I would do this with a hex. That way you could just use a standard wrench. Um, this is okay if you if this is all you can get your hands on. But don't use a ratchet. Use a breaker bar. When you are releasing the valve thrust or trying to put the valve thrust back on it. That way you don't have to worry about it, you know... The ratchet not being able to stop it from going somewhere you have control over it or if you had a since this is a 22 millimeter i think it's a 19 millimeter hex key that you would need for it i don't have one that big so that's why i use the ratchet but i wound up going and getting a breaker bar that was i think it's a 10 inch or a 12 inch because um, the only other breaker bars i have for half inch are like two foot long and that's just overkill for this so all right we'll go see what a 4.88 millimeter dial pin actually cost okay i have to be quick because my air conditioner finally turned off <clears throat> so if you want a 4.88 millimeter pin and you don't want to pay aprilia 50 bucks for theirs then these guys mcmaster car uh, look for a metric class Z plug. There are better pins in a class Z. Uh, this one should be withheld within a thousandth of an inch. Not a thousandth of a millimeter, thousandth of an inch. But you can see down here in the 1.52 to 12.71, you can get, uh, pins within 0 0.01 millimeter they're two inches long they're rockwell c60 so pretty hard made out of tool steel about nine bucks a piece if you buy one and you can see right here you can buy 4.88 you can buy 4.89 4.87 you type in how many you want to uh order here or if you want some more detail Click on the one you want to order, then hit product detail, and it will tell you exactly what you're getting here. So, 
for a 4.88 millimeter. That is, if you want to skip a lot of this bullshit with searching on here, the part number is 2281A2. It says it's delivered in two weeks, which is probably still faster than you would get the one from Aprilia. So, there you go. Tolerance is within minus zero millimeters to plus point zero zero two five millimeter. And I know there are some people watching this that probably want me to break that down, but I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of that tonight. So, that's just an option. Uh, this is probably only an option if you live in the U.S. If you're in Europe, go figure out what the McMaster car equivalent, go figure out what the metric equivalent of McMaster car is in Europe. There you go. Also, while we're on the McMaster car website, I wound up ordering uh, this set of feeler gauges from them. It was pretty much fifty-seven dollars. Uh, 50, uh, 32 pieces you get a one thousandth one and a half thousandths two thousandths two and a half thousandths and then from three thousandths up to thirty thousandths in one thousand one thousandths increments they are 12 inches long and if you're worried about whether or not they are um <clears throat> so the set that I got can you see it maybe there maybe that's too bright I can't tell if you can see that or not but anyways right here they're uh it has an inch measurement on top and a millimeter metric or millimeter measurement on bottom. Uh, I don't expect these. That looks like a kind of a crappy laser etch. I don't expect those to hang around. So we'll see. But I've been going through. I'm checking them. There's been a couple of them that's been out by like a couple thousandths here and there, but most of them have been pretty spot on. Actually, I think I might have checked these with my old crappy calipers. Uh, I've been going back through and checking them with my better calipers, and they're mostly, most of them have been on that I've checked so far. So, yeah. For less than 60 bucks, I think this is a pretty good set. Uh, they're made in the U.S., so come from somewhere in Illinois. 